Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. For the first time ever, Western Massachusetts Regional Women's Correctional Centre opened its doors to a television crew. This is our house. You're a visitor. Given incredible access to this uniquely female space. Can you back up for me, please? That is home to some of America's most dangerous women. All I can see is my whole hand filled with blood. Girl got her eyes beat. When someone swings first, win the fight. Charged with everything from drug trafficking, armed robbery, gang violence and even murder. <laughs> Our cameras captured every shocking and sometimes surprising moment of life behind bars. But jail life can be explosive and every day can be a battle to stay safe. Do you feel like you're going to harm yourself? Oh my God. When good girls go bad, anything can happen. This is fucking... Oh my God, I want to something. Pod 2B is for prisoners who have been found guilty and are serving their sentence. They wear green. My name's Rachel Wynn. And I'm here because I can't keep my hands to myself. I wish I could. I'm an angry bitch. I'm trying. Rachel is nearing the end of a 90-day sentence for assault and battery. Yeah, Rachel Wynn, a lot of anger issues. I'm kind of angry at the world, kind of angry at the system. Uh, feels like she's been mistreated. Shut your face, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> She's had some struggles in life. Another one with poor social skills, poor coping skills, doesn't know how to deal with frustration, doesn't know how to deal with her anger, doesn't know how to deal with uh, when things don't go right. So she acts out or she does something uh, to get herself in trouble. I fought some girl in the bathroom of a club. You know, she hit me first. You know when you're like hyped up and you're in that moment, I was trying to get back, literally just trying to get back into the club to get my shoe. And I assaulted the bouncer, I guess I knocked him off his feet. I didn't mean it. I just, what I did is I just pled guilty to all my charges to try to get out on my last court date. I got Thank you. They didn't let me out. They gave me 90, 90 days to serve, so I'm here. Copy, bitch. Yes! <laughs> Rachel has been told to report to Officer Courtney. What? You know, I'm giving a ticket. Why? You were warned on the 8th about doing the exact same thing. Copy. And you have multiple violations, late for count. Rachel has repeatedly failed to lock in her cell quickly enough when ordered to. And everybody else is locking in and you're out there making a disturbance. I, I didn't hear you say lock in, I was outside. Tickets carry penalties. You guys just like writing tickets. I really you guys, Yeah, you do. Whatever, it's fine. Have I ever written you a ticket? Have I ever deserved one? You don't even know what that bitch yeah. was saying to me. And I'll tell you guys later. You don't know what they were saying. She was saying to me. You don't know what this is about. It, it whatever. doesn't matter, though. Yeah, it does matter. What? Give me the fucking ticket. It matters. It matters big time. I was like, you make it longer if you talk to me like that again. Because you just like writing tickets, but give me it. I'll I've never it. written you a ticket. I didn't hear you say lock in, first of all. And it, it was arguing about saying. OK. Relax, okay? Because no. if you don't, you're gonna go to one beat. Okay. Okay? I'll Here you go, young lady. Thank you. Thanks. Rachel has been given a 72-hour lock-in, which means she will have to stay in her cell 23 hours a day for the next three days. The reason I got the lock is because I miscount by a few seconds. Rachel has been in and out of jail for the last three years. I've been in here probably, this would be my fifth time in a year for assault and battery charges on just random people, not family members. Like, the first one was a cop, the second one was a roommate. 
a bouncer was the most recent one. You keep saying you're never gonna come back, you do. You come back, you see the same people over and over again. She has just two weeks of her sentence left to go. Pod 3A is for prisoners awaiting trial. They wear orange. Just gonna go to the hallway, do your assessment real quick, okay? So, uh, come with me. First timer Julia has been in the jail for just three weeks. You said this is for the assessment? Yes. And we're just gonna go in here. We don't have an office in the unit, so we're gonna use the nurse's office. Actually, you can see it right there. All right, so, do you have any, um, any concerns at all right now? Everything's going okay? Yeah, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> all things considered. Do you have any family with a criminal history? Not that I know of. As far as you know, okay. No. So, do you know anyone else with a criminal history? Not outside of who I've met here. I'm 21 and I'm from a little town in Ashburnham. It's up on the border of New Hampshire and Massachusetts. I was definitely probably lower class technically, um, socioeconomic wise, only from growing up on the farm, my dad's trades and things. I, I know people often say that it must be like really ideal to grow up on a farm, but it's it's no like walk in the park. I mean, my childhood was, it was just a lot of labor and work. Do you use drugs or alcohol at all? I've had alcohol socially. Just socially, okay. So it's not a problem for you? She's very atypical of the women that we see come through our doors. Um, she doesn't have a lot of the issues that our other women have. The last grade you completed in school? I'm currently enrolled in my second year of college. Okay. Were you working prior to coming to jail? Phlebotomist for Quest Diagnostics. Oh, that's right. I'm going to be telling you that. I work in a doctor's office, so I draw blood, collect okay. specimens. I paid college all on my own through scholarships and a minimum wage job. I'm organized logical, overly scientific, wicked ambitious, hugely ambitious, I think, just from the way I was raised. I assume this is probably going to be pretty quick, too, right? I'd say I'm a little bit um, solitary, but I still love hanging out with all of my friends, definitely. It's kind of a tricky question. You can answer it however you want. Uh, it says, why are you in jail? Like I said, I don't, you know. A grand misunderstanding. OK. The girls are very curious for what I'm here for. Um, I've had some girls straight out ask me, and I'll just say, you know, I don't want to get into the details, and they drop it. I know one girl recognized me, because she was from my area. She had seen a newspaper, so. They think I killed my friend. So, murder. Twenty-one-year-old Julia Enright. Police say she killed this man. Twenty-year-old Brandon Chicklis of Westminster. Police then located Chicklis' cell phone at Julia Enright's home in Ashburnham. Then they examined a treehouse out back. And it was determined that the victim's blood was present on the stairs leading to the treehouse, on the inside of the treehouse, under the treehouse, and in the defendant's vehicle. Chicklis and Enright were known to each other, and she admitted to drinking with him on the day he went missing. It was in the paper, it's all over the news. Um, so we put her on protective custody. Um, she didn't really know what that was when she came in. She was kind of first time in jail, very naive. You know, it's always made sense to me. They have to do their job. I have to be a suspect. This is routine. But once I was sitting in the jail, I'm like, where did it get so messed up that I'm suddenly in a cell? Julia has no idea how long she might be here. And high-profile cases like hers can take years to get to court. Forty-six-year-old mother of six, Carrie, has been at the jail for 19 months. She's talking to friend Consuela about her case. She stated that Carrie Pilot began shooting in the air, and when Carrie Pilot saw Black by the tree, she'd been shooting toward him and then back at him as she went by in the vehicle. Carrie was away in trial for assault and battery, cocaine trafficking, and weapons charges when she was brought to court and charged with an even more serious crime. They hit me with first degree murder. 
The murder victim was the daughter of one of Carrie's close friends. She called her her niece. She lived in my house. She lived with my kids. Um, she grew up, I mean, her mother cut my daughter's umbilical board in the labor room. And here I am charged with her murder. I was home for two weeks on bail and um, I was attacked. I was jumped. They robbed me and took my phone. Kept calling the phone. I went over to where it was and I'm thinking she's just gonna give me back the phone. Well, it got real scary and um, we decided to just leave. And at that point, my niece and my goddaughter pulled up and they were like, what are you guys doing? And we're like, I was just explaining to them what was going on. And they're like, oh, okay. And we leave and instead of her taking a left and going, she tries to do a U-turn and follow us. Now, we're already gone. As Soon as she does a U-turn and starts to follow us, it was an all-out war zone. They just lit the car up. She got hit, shot in her head, dead. And we didn't know because we were already gone. So when they called and said, you know, she got shot, you have to come to the hospital, we're like, what, how? Carrie maintains her innocence and has taken it upon herself to fight her case alongside her lawyer. No, I didn't do it. It's, it's infuriating, it's incredibly stressful, yes. it's difficult, it's like an enormous circus. It's yes. a circus. Yes. It's a, and There's way 13 people. 13 there. people were there and you, nobody can tell you who did anything. If I get found guilty for first degree murder, um, it's 25 to life. They have nothing against me and they're trying to make the, they, the DA came here and offered the girls from Pittsfield to get out of jail free card. They you can tell on me. me yeah? That charge made me want to just die. Like, that's horrible to hold over my head that I've been charged with that, taking somebody else's life. I don't know how to deal with this. And I just feel like I, they're just doing what they want to do, the system. I feel like um, they, they're holding people that are accountable that they're taking an easy way out where they don't have to investigate much, I think, you know? You can indict a ham sandwich, my lawyer says. So because we're, you know, because it's urban tragedies and because we're black women and we're, and we're poor and you just, you just do what you want to do. Yeah. No, I'm fighting. I'm a fighter. Um, I have a voice that needs to be heard. Um, very, really, really resourceful. I'm a good self-advocate. In segregation unit 1B, convicted shoplifter and heroin addict Jackie was sentenced to 15 days in segregation. Can I get butter? She's been here for 10 days out of her 15, but hopes to get out early. Counselor Peach is awesome. He is the special management counselor for us bad girls. <laughs> He's the only one that can get you out of the hole earlier than your, your time is up. Jackie hopes she's behaved well enough to qualify for step down, which means reduced time in segregation. Um, we have five people eligible for step down this week. Um, the first one being uh, Jackie Silver. Uh, Jackie has completed 10 of her 15 days, but she's been good in the unit. She's completed the program. Um, no behavior issues, no issues from staff. Um, so I'm recommending that she can go back to population today. Jackie, come on downstairs for a minute. Yeah, Jackie got approved. Yeah. Where's she going? Um, to be, back to to be. So. Yeah. 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 Come on to my office for a minute, Jackie. All right, take a seat, Mrs. All right, how are you today? Good. So you know by obviously you're not in custody shackles. Right, right, right. <laughs> you got to prove um, you got to prove a step down. Okay. Um, obviously you have to stay discipline free. You can't get any more trouble. Okay. All right. I'll be... Seven days. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, Peach. Otherwise. Uh, you're asking a lot. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise we're gonna bring it right back. No, so no, we don't want to do that. Um, so you're going back today. You're housed in 2B. You're locked until the 28th at nine o'clock. You get to come out. So <laughs> my whole sentence. <laughs> oh, why when you're done? Mm -hmm. When are you out? When you're sent? The when... 31st. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, you only got three more. Oh, OK. I got seven days left here. I go to court Monday, and I'm out Friday, Friday morning. <laughs> <laughs>
Yay! <laughs> I'm ready. Go. Jackie's heading back to 2B to serve what she hopes is the last week of her sentence in jail. All right, we'll see you later, Meryl Street. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Peach. Over in pod 3A, jail has been a steep learning curve for new inmate Julia, who's awaiting trial for murder. In the first few days, I didn't go out of my way to talk to anyone. I like to observe, so I'll look around a lot. Right here is where they bring in the girls for, like, just any new girls that are coming in. It's weird to see someone, you know, out of oranges, because they bring them in and they're still in their civilian clothes. You know, they just got here. Almost any girl you talk to will say she's innocent. <laughs> Rumors get twisted so fast. It's, it's insane. Um, I don't even know all of mine, of course. It's tough to figure it out because I don't talk to a lot of the girls and usually the ones that are making rumors about you aren't going to be talking to you about it. You kind of hear it through other people. As soon as you walk into the general population, everybody looks at you and automatically judges you before they even know your name. Either get lucky and start kicking it off with people that know the ropes and that will help you and show you how to do things and how to get get through the day, how to get through life here. Or there's people that they tend to keep to themselves, which I think is like Julia. I found a lot of girls liked that I was different. I think one girl specifically said, you don't belong here, we can tell. <laughs> I like you, and I was like, um, thank you, I think. Julia is learning to fit into the pod by drawing tattoo designs for other inmates. The icebreaker of using drawing was really helpful in being able to learn a lot of the rules and everything. So it gives me an opportunity to talk to people. That's my daughter, and this is my dog. My, dog. my Yeah, my daughter passed away, and my dog is still here. So, but yeah, that's my tattoo. Right? Doesn't look sick. Awesome. I was lucky that one of the first girls that traded with me, she said she'd give me a full bag of coffee, a full bag of our cream, and then a bar of soap, a nice soap though, not the ones that the, we get for free. This is what I'm getting right when I get out. You have to show me. I think that's gonna look so cool. Um, I know, that's why I'm excited. Art is valued so much here and I would never have guessed that, you know, I had no idea what girls want or do in prison. All right, so I'll give it to you, Art, yeah. It's important that Julia makes friends and fits in because with her high-profile murder case, she could be here for quite some time. <laughs> Rachel Lim was given a 72-hour lockdown for disobeying the officers. And now she finds herself in segregation. Um, because when I was on my 72-hour excuse me, my 72-hour walk last week, two girls came to my room to get chips and hot balls. One of them entered the room, so I got, um, violation of a rule. But Rachel is now facing a much more serious charge. I just fell my drug test. I'm not to be, um, on Suboxone. Suboxone is a heroin substitute used to treat addicts. My friend said to me, I agree with that. The Suboxone is, is in a, uh, it's like an orange, clear orange um, strip. Um, and it looks like they will send it in that type of color card. They will like melt it into the card. You know, they're, they're very creative. They're very creative. Officer Carmona is searching Rachel's property for evidence of drugs. This guy knew they were coming to love you, so I just, I just ate the It's a fighting battle every day that we try to stop from drugs coming into the facility. I, I can tell you, like, everybody in here as staff is 110% involved in trying to keep drugs away from the facility. Did you find anything? Nothing? The officers are also concerned about two other new inmates they suspect of smuggling drugs into the jail. So, um, I'm gonna do a narcotic uh, contraband search of um, two inmates, they're on narcotic watches because when they came in on the 
uh, scanner, it, they had some discrepancy in their scans in the pelvic area. So the first girl, she's the one that actually had contraband. She had green leafy substance in a plastic bag inserted into her vaginal area. Um, and they had to convince her to turn it over. So because of that, she's on the contraband watch. So the officer is going to place the inmate restraints while I do the search. So this is our contraband kit. Inside it, we have um, safety goggles, um, a mask, fix because sometimes the odor is a bit atrocious. So now I'm just gonna go right in there and stir up the soup and see what I can find. The sample is negative. I'm gonna have them turn the water on, corporate Donovan, so I can flash it. There's no evidence on the new inmates, but Officer Whiston wants to know how Rachel managed to get drugs in the jail. Okay, take a seat right in that gray chair. So you're in segregation, and while you're in here, they tested a urine, and it came back for Suboxone. So how come your urine tested positive? Were there girls doing drugs in the unit? Can I plead the fifth? You can, can plead the fifth. I don't want to incriminate myself. I mean, being honest is, is the best way to go, don't you think? I mean, yeah, but the evidence is there. You tested positive, so the jail yeah. knows you did it. All right, so what do I say? Like, I don't... You can say where you got it, or if you got it from somebody, or if you got it through visiting, if you got it through the mail, you know? I have to see where I got it from, though. Come on. Did you come in with the suboxone strips? No. But you obt obtained them from somebody in the unit? They were just given to you? But, yeah. Okay. And you're not going to tell us what individual gave them to you? No. Okay. I think Miss Lynn wanted to tell us where she got them and was maybe a little nervous that whoever she did get them from would find out that, you know, she was the one who told. So I could see in her face she, she, wa she wanted to tell us where she got them from, but she didn't. I'm not really coming down now, so I'm still really high. I'm still really high. After three days, my eyes bend. Um, I'm just, I'm sorry. I don't mean to enjoy it so much, but I'm enjoying it. <laughs> yeah. But Rachel might not enjoy the penalty if she's found guilty of smuggling drugs into the jail, which could mean a long time in segregation. I don't know what they're going to do to me for failing the drug test. I just hope I don't get charged by bringing my facility. Rachel will find out her punishment when she has her disciplinary board in a few days' time. In 3B, Carrie doesn't have a lot to celebrate if she's found guilty. She's facing a 25 to life sentence for murder. Her friend India wants to cheer her up. I'm making a cake or a pie, lemon pie, for my Carrie Pilot. This is her. She doesn't even like sweets, but she loves this cake that I make her. Carrie Pilot is mom, so she's definitely she's one of the older inmates in the pod, and she is caring like a mother. Uh, Miss Pilot kind of watches over the other girls if they need someone to talk to. But she's definitely what you would consider a pod mom. That is what Miss Pilot is. You're going to be all right. All right, they're going to let you go. Don't forget, that's what you got to bring. All right, go put that with I'm you. always trying to help, so that's why they call me mom. <laughs> trying to give out coffees, advice, anything, you know? And I see girls that are feeling down or crying. I like to talk to them. I mean, not everybody can have that person to make them feel better, you know? I wish I had somebody to make me feel better, but make me feel better is reaching out, I think. It was supposed to be for her birthday, like, last month, but we never did it. I was in the hospital for my birthday on July 29th, and so when I came back to the unit, <laughs> um, I had, India was planning on making me a cake before I went, because she makes this great lemon pie. And they made it for me. Happy birthday.
I didn't think they were gonna send happy birthday. I thought they were just making the pie because I liked the pie. And then they sang happy birthday. I wanted to cry, like it meant so much to me. I feel bad, you know, like being in jail, there's no holidays, there's no nothing. You know, like it's the little things that make you feel a little special or put a smile on your face, so. I don't like that much cake. You Which one do you want? Just pick one, please. Why don't I like this one? You want this one? Okay. In 2015, July 31st, my son was murdered. I went to the hospital because it was my son's anniversary, and I had mapped out that I was just gonna end my life. I could see it like it was yesterday. You know, it, I mean, he was he's a good boy. Broad daylight, one o'clock in the, in the afternoon at the barbershop, you know. I hit him five times with a 45. I, I slept on the, the cemetery, on the ground. We're in the middle of winter. I would walk in and come in the back and sit there with him all night, all day during the day, rain, sleet, snow. My heart hurt so bad that I needed some help with mental, you know? I lost, I got six kids, five girls, and I had one boy, and I lost them all. I lost my kids, I lost my partner, lost my job, lost my house, I lost myself. It's tangy. I've never so ate nothing like in jail like, like this until she made this. Mm. I like that. It meant so much to me. That was me being grateful and me realizing you know, that I have relationships with these women. We're not just a number to each other. You know, we care about each other and what happens. So my father is coming and I'm, of course, super excited here. And I just want to like look my best to be my best while I'm there. So I usually, you know, fix my hair, make sure it's all Nice. We can see the um, highway in the distance. It makes you really sad because you can see all of these people that are free and they don't realize how free they are and they're it's like, I want to be driving down the highway. That would be excellent. That's uh, definitely my dad. <laughs> I was, I'm nearly positive that was his truck. I'm so excited. Before I go to a visitation, I try to make a list in my head of all the things, if there's anything I really need to talk about. Of course, you always forget, because <laughs> you're so emotional when you walk in. Hey. How you doing? With my father, at least, he's so talkative. <laughs> I love him to death, but he immediately started going on about like, oh, and I just fixed my truck and I bought another truck and, oh, I have this tree job next week. We'll talk about, you know, investigations with the case and everything. For me, after all that's out of the way, the important things are just being able to talk like real people, you know, because we don't get to anymore and you miss them so much. And it's like, just to be able to see someone you really care about. I usually start crying after if I think about it too much. It's tough because, you know, you're always happy and then you walk away and you're kind of sad because, well, you get to see them and you're happy, but then you have to walk away from them. That's always the hardest part, you know. You hug someone, but you have to let go and you see them, but you have to walk in the opposite direction. Jackie has just come back from court, where she expected to have her release in a few days confirmed. I'm relaxing. But Jackie didn't quite get the news she was expecting. A year. No, this is the first time I got a year. A year at Mill Street. Where are you at? Silver, one. Huh? Silver, one. Thank you. 
Five days ago, a warrant popped up for six new charges out of North Adams. And that is when my running partner had court in North Adams, where he gave my name so he didn't have to do jail time. See what I mean by men suck. <laughs> right? Well, the judge came down hard on me because of my record and gave me a year. So instead of getting out Friday, I'm here for about 50 more Fridays. <laughs> Rachel Lynn has been in segregation for seven days for failing a drug test. Today is her disciplinary meeting with Lieutenant Sherard. 821, um, possession of contraband, guilty or not guilty? Guilty. Uh, positive drug screen test result, guilty or not guilty? Guilty. Intoxication, guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. So you tested positive for Suboxone. Right? Right. And you received them personally? Like I said, I don't want to incriminate myself. Mm -hmm. But they were, there was something that you got from outside. Yep. OK. And so right now, you don't want to share any no. more information about that, how that happened? No. But that's a total of 20 days. You will um, get three days credit for days served. All right, I'm going to have you step out, and the officer will take you back to your area. OK. Rachel has been given 20 days in segregation by the jail, but she believes she won't have to serve all of it because her court-imposed sentence is due to be completed in three days' time. OK, see you later. Bye. But the day before she thinks she's getting out, Councillor Darlene has bad news. We're going to be heading up to 23, I believe it is, to meet with Rachel Lynn. Hey, Rachel. Yeah. So I'm here to meet with you about your release date. Yeah. You understand that your release date changed from the 7th to the 18th, correct? Yes. Um, because of the A violations? What? You had two separate incidents, either one of them would have taken back your good time. So your investigation, the 10 days has been removed. I don't remove times. The A violation automatically removes the earned good time credit because it's no longer earned. Every inmate can earn up to 10 days of good time a month. So if you do programs, if you work, you get, if you do anything work program related, you get 10 days of good time, which is it'll take 10 days out of your sentence for that month and takes it away towards the end of your out day. Rachel had earned 10 days of good time. She's now lost that because she took drugs in jail. The system now reflects the new release date. Rachel now has 11 days of her sentence to complete, all of which has to be done in segregation. I lost my good time. I should probably get some day four. I think it's healthy. Oh, shit, right? That's some fucked up shit. That's so heavy. You're sick. Oh. Well, I can't even breathe right now. Like, this is fucking... Oh, my God. I want to break something. I want to break something. It's early morning in the jail. In 3A, Julia, accused of murder, is getting ready for her first court date since her arrest. Today is the day to go to court for pretrial. This is my first time going back to court. 
Free trial number one. No one told me to pack my stuff up, but I always see the other girls do that, so I'm going to assume this would be the proper time to do so, on the off chance if someone doesn't come back. Inmates with high-profile cases like Julia can spend years in pre-trial jail before they are proven either innocent or guilty. Good morning. Good luck. Yeah, likewise. Tops, I'm... I've come to terms with, like, two years at most. I'm putting my bets on one, and I'm putting my hopes on the next court date that they'll figure out enough to not even indict me. Girls always say you need to try to accept the absolute worst case scenario. And if you can come to terms with that, you can come, you'll be at peace with everything. While she's in the jail, Julia is shielded from the media interest in her case. I mean, I think they bring me around the back and keep me in a cell until they bring me up to the top. So I'm the one that actually gets to kind of avoid the media until I walk in the room and then they're all gonna probably try to zoom in. It's definitely upsetting. You know, everything gets so skewed and hurtful. It's, it's pretty depressing what people do for money and amusement. You know, kind of tear your life apart and then watch. Social media is significantly worse. You know, I've, I've heard about death threats and things to different people in my family and that's insane. No, I don't really believe any of this. You know, even after time. It's still hard to believe. Like Julia, Carrie is facing a murder charge. She's been in pre-trial for over a year and a half. Well, coming in, um... 19 months ago, I had no clue. And um, I was a mess, you know, trauma, alcohol addicted. So when I came in, I mean, and it took some time to get bounced around in the court system and, you know, and, and back until I finally, I said, enough is enough. This is, this, you know, this can't go on like this. I gotta fight, I gotta do something. She's trying to fight her own case alongside her attorney. As part of this, Carrie's put in a request to see a lawyer employed by the jail who helps inmates that want to research and fight their own cases. Because of, of the community in which I live in, and the same judge that went, you know, did, did my cases since 1996, right. is the same judge. I've replayed this case over and over and over again, and actually, I don't see light at the end of the tunnel. You know, my lawyers can tell you anything. At the end of the day, it's up to the judge. And I don't think we have a fair judge. You know, you're presumed to be innocent, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the, the government has to um, demonstrate proof beyond a reasonable doubt. It doesn't work like that, though. What I have to do is now I have to investigate and prove that this didn't happen. Well, I don't I don't blame you for, you know, cynicism, but I don't hold that cynicism. Mm -hmm. The system goes slow. As agonizing as it is, to be in orange, you know, for a sustained period of time, you want to get it right. Thank you for everything. You're welcome. If Miss Pilot is found guilty of the crime that she is being charged with, she could spend the rest of her life in a prison. Then I used to say to the girls that were in here that were facing, you know, murder charges, like, oh my God, how are they just making it through the day? And now I'm one of the women. And it's so hard. to think that, you know, I'll never see my kids again. That's the hard part. I'm not innocent, but this is something I'm not guilty of at all. In reality, you know, that day will come one day and it will be either guilty or not guilty. And I don't know how I'll handle it at all. In 2B, where inmates have received their sentence, Jackie had thought she was leaving jail, 
only to be slapped with a new one-year sentence. She's uh, not going to be going anywhere, but she will be classified today for some lower security. She has a meeting with senior staff about where she'll complete her sentence. One option, Mill Street, is a low-security drug rehab unit. Jackie being hit with additional charges helps us out a little bit because it gives us a little more time to work with her. All right, Jackie, you know the drill. This is okay. your initial classification hearing. We're just going to review your sentencing information, hear from you we got here, and talk about your plans, OK? OK. All right, so you are serving a year for larceny and shoplifting? Correct. So what would you do? I went out stealing to support my habit. All right, so what do you think you need to do while you are here? Work on recovery. Okay. Have you started programming yet? Yep. They want me to go to Mill Street. Who's they? The judge. Was that your recommendation yes. in court? Yes, correct. Right. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, I can certainly say I would agree with the Mill Street recommendation, mm -hmm. um, you know, particularly as you know, we haven't had a chance to do that before. In terms <laughs> of movement, um, if beds are available, you go. Right. If they're not, I don't. Just keep doing what you're doing, right? All right? Do right. well, and hopefully we'll see you shortly after the 17th. I hate to say it, but I'm looking forward to it, you know? Yeah. All right. You going to come and see me? OK, thank you. They're going to put me in Mill Street, which is a program, which is fine, which is good, because I need a program. So I'll have more time to, you know, think about if I continue using drugs, where it's going to lead me back to, and this is here. and. Like, I'm done with this. I can't keep doing this. I'm too old to do this. Um, if I continue using drugs the way I was using, I'm going to die. So it has to be it. Julia is back from a long day in court, where she's facing a murder charge. Pre-trial, um, it's one of those things we all look forward to because you want to move forward in your case, but it's usually extremely uneventful. Um, I had expected that for mine. And having left here at probably 8 in the morning and eventually going to court for all of 10 minutes, I didn't actually get back here until 7.30 at night. So I'm going to do a pat search one at a time, turn around, put your arms out to the side, face the back wall. I'm kept alone because I have a high-profile case. They wanted to make sure, like, Families won't get upset or something, so they kept me separate. I just waited on the stairs with the officers standing next to me, and then they kept waiting and peeking over the edge. And a lot of the times, even when I showed up, the attorney had come down, and he's like, they don't need your appearance. So I could have spent the entire day in a cell, and it wouldn't have made a difference, you know? You know, you realize that you're just going to have pretrial after pretrial after pretrial. And you'll ask, and usually your lawyers will give you an estimate. Mine just said months, maybe a year or so. I think she understands the seriousness of what it is, but I think you know she thinks that, like I said, the justice system is going to work itself out, um, you know, for that. But it's going to come a point where she is going to see, like, oh my God, that I'm facing, I could be facing life in jail. You're all set, Julia. Just have a seat over. Right over there, yeah. So I did briefly try to come to terms with, what if they mess up so bad I'm in life for, in for life? I thought about it, and that's ridiculous because there's, you know, that can't happen, but I'm like, I can't handle that one. Julia kind of keeps quiet. She kind of keeps a lot of stuff to herself, you know? So, um, so it's going to be a challenge just to make sure that we know that she's safe and that she doesn't, you know, she thinks she's going to be OK, and then she needs to let us know if she's struggling. Uh, so that's something we're going to have to keep an eye on. Suddenly, I understood the death sentence. Like, I would rather die than spend my entire life in prison. 